I had four days of diving California with my friends Cal and Mike on the hunt for the ghost of the sea, white sea bass. Unfortunately, I didn't even see one underwater. But rather than get on an airplane to go back home, I figure, what's one more day? So I'm going back to Catalina, I'm gonna rent the place next door to one, and we're gonna do this all over again. And fish aside, I'm staying for the spirit and sake of traveling itself, because I figure I should be celebrating what I did cross paths with. Like wonderful people, like Catalina locals Juan Aguilar and his wife Julie. So we arrived to our humble abode on Catalina Island. Juan lives right next door. The end buddies already invading their territory. I feel like this is our, our old days of traveling together. We're stoked. Oh my really God. Cool. And as soon as we settled in next door, Juan started cooking up his specialty. Lobster Kong Pao with Catalina spiny lobster that he got himself. Island style. Catalina Island style. This meal was packed with flavor and brought the heat. And spending a little more time with Juan and Julie makes me so happy that we stayed. He doesn't even eat, like to eat lobster. <laughs> <laughs> I'll eat it every now and then, but for the most part, I just yeah, love yeah, like, going out, oh, catching it, yeah, it's fish, I mean, being, yeah. being able to share it with friends and family. It's so special for Juan to, like, to share all this with you guys. Your flight chain, everything, it all works out. Yeah. This is mm -hmm. what traveling was for me. Is it was like you meet somebody and you connect with them, and all of a sudden mm -hmm. you're getting on a whole different train and going to a whole different country or whatever it is. Like yeah. that was traveling to me it was that was the adventure the next morning we set off for one more day of diving juan took us out on his boat and we started the day off looking for calico bass a really tasty fish that i'm hoping to bring back to hawaii juan says that calicos are the hardest fish to shoot in california they're darty and fast and easily spooked Juan's advice to me, you just gotta catch one tripping. But first, we gotta find them. Calico bass are also called kelp bass and they do blend right into the kelp. And Juan is right, these little suckers are tricky. They don't let me get too close, so I start trusting in my gun and honing in to longer shots. I'm now trying this puppet technique that I use back home to see if it'll attract more fish. Now I have no idea if the puppet did its job, but a sheep's head swam right in. It feels great to be finding my rhythm again. Juan is doing the same and Mission Calico is feeling quite successful. My calico are getting bigger and my shots are getting better. Today is going great. But while breathing up on the surface, I get a glimpse of a fish swimming by. It is not a calico. It takes a moment for my brain to understand what I'm seeing. Is it the unicorn of California? My brain is saying yes, so I take a drop. I get to the bottom and I'm looking around. There are fish everywhere. But where is it? Where is that ghost? I know I saw one. I slowly swim, scanning left and right. And as I scan left, the ghost emerges from the right. As I turn back in its direction, I saw it but only as it spooked away. But wow, I know I should be devastated, but I'm actually exhilarated right now. I finally found one underwater. And what I would give to redo this moment and land this fish, but I finally saw the unicorn. I had a chance and I'm grateful for that. 
But what I didn't know is moments before this encounter, Justin and Juan took a drop together. They were in the thickest part of the kelp bed. Thick kelp makes darker waters, so Juan had to let his eyes adjust once he got down there. And when he did, he made out the shadows of two white sea bass slowly crossing his path, presenting the perfect opportunity that came together with the perfect shot. Juan follows his line down to retrieve his prize and there, tangled up in the kelp, is such a beautiful fish. And together, they captured the unicorn. My god, the ghost exists after all. I am in awe of Juan's fish, to say the very least. I want to see it, I want to see it, I want to see it. <laughs> Wow. wow, it's a real white sea bass, not just in pictures. <laughs> Beautiful. And everything feels just as it should be. Ew. Oh my gosh, Juan. <laughs> to me, I feel like I'm seeing a unicorn right now. Like, we've been out here, you know, going hard. Hard. Every single day, and it's like, you're going after something you've never ever even seen, and you have to do this all day, every day, and after a while, it just like, you know, you're just, you're, you're relying on this sense of hope. I saw one. So yeah. like, I, my heart was beating so, so fast just to know like, I saw the unicorn, I saw the <laughs> unicorn. Oh. Can I help you cook this thing up tonight? I'm so oh, yeah. excited to oh, finally yeah. eat one. <laughs> it's gonna be delicious. I know I had nothing to do with getting this fish, but I still, no, no, <laughs> I'm all did. about the teamwork. And I like, once anybody gets what we're going for, that is just, Victory! That just feels like absolute glory. The fact that we get to bring this home to Julie and Buddy, yeah. cook it up tonight. Oh, yeah! Woo! <laughs> Amazing. It's a good day right here. Oh my gosh! Thanks. There you go. Cool. So we're driving home, talking about how we're gonna cook Juan's white sea bass, and then I just noticed all this fennel, and I asked Juan about it, and he concurred that it is indeed fennel. It's wild, actually invasive, but he said it's really good and it smells really good. So, um, I don't know, let's pick some up and make the fish with it. Yeah? We returned to land, excited <laughs> to show Buddy and Julie our harvest, and they were equally excited to show us a Whoa, discovery of their what'd own. What did you say? You, better, yeah. you saw a buffalo? Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> it's bigger than you! Wow! It is bigger than you. Oh, it is. Oh, it is. Yeah, no, I, I had it. Wow. Thank you. Wow. Oh, Where's the buffalo? Yeah. Oh my gosh! Buddy, it's humongous! Apparently, there is a herd of wild buffalo that were brought to Catalina Island for a film in the 1920s and just left there. Meanwhile, back at our cute little cottages, friends are already gathering and playing guitar after hearing the news of Juan's beautiful fish. See, my theory is that if I act like the bad girl and clean your fish, cut your fish, cook your fish, that I will, you know, earn the right to one day shoot one. <laughs> I got right to work with cleaning the fish as Juan told me a story of how he got into spearfishing. I moved out here to Catalina in 2001. I was 19 years old and we're sitting in the communal kitchen area and this guy pulls up a sea bass just about the same size as this one. And I said, what is that? He said, it's a white sea bass. What? Is it good? He said, it's absolutely delicious. I never really ate fish before I moved out here. Wow. So I said... Wow. So you never spearfished, never really ate fish, and your first introduction to all of it was white sea bass right exactly. here in Catalina. Yeah. So uh, I went and bought a pole spear, bought a fishing license, learned the regulations, and then one day uh, my buddy lent me his uh, spear gun, 
and we went out and found some big schools of yellowtail and uh, I shot my first yellowtail and was absolutely hooked oh and said all right goodness. I gotta start saving up for my own gun and went and bought a rife and been doing it ever since. One, getting this fish makes everything feel right. Now I get to see it, clean it, hold it, and cook it, and even take a nibble at its heart. And one day, I just might get one of my own. But I think I just want to keep it simple because this is my first time eating a white sea bass, and I just want the what you know the fish to speak for itself. Let's do it, I think. Yeah. I'm making a marinade of olive oil, lemon juice, lemon zest, garlic, shoyu, and fennel. The leaves and the bulbs. I also have to try some raw. I know you should normally let your fish cuts rest a day before you eat it sashimi, but we're going home tomorrow and I just I have to try some of this raw. So cutting a little bit of sashimi. Cheers! This fish is honestly one of the best I've had. And with all the work put in and memories made that led up to eating this wonderful fish, I know that I'll be back for more. Mm -hmm. Who caught this fish? Uncle Y.